This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وعملا وقربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارضى عنا يا أكرم الأكرمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So uh, we, we said last time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he uh, tried and tested Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام We looked at the meaning of ابتلاء from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows the end result so it's, the word isn't taken literally but um, it's to show us, you know, it's, it's for us to gain, gain these uh, messages and these lessons from. So he said, why the, uh, <clears throat> uh, so he talked about uh, when Sayyidina Ibrahim was uh, chested with these uh, kalimat, right, these words. And uh, we said that um, it's the position of Imam, Imam Mujahid, who was uh, one of the students of uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu. And Abu Saud favors this, favors this position that we took as well. That what are the kalimat? What comes next? So being made an imam, building, building the Kaaba, all of these things. So as we recall from uh, earlier ayat, these ayat are starting with the with the particle id, 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 and recall and recall and recall. So it's it's like think about the time, so you can picture all the events, so you see them in detail. For the for the lessons, the lessons for us as well, right? Uh, it's for everyone, anyone that this uh, this book comes to that he, uh, this the words of this book reach. Stop and think about this, right? It's you know consequential, right? So we ask Allah for the tawfiq to do that. And so, what happens? We see next in the ayah. He says, "وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So and mention or and record, right? Either, right? And so either recall I, I, either the Prophet was shown this Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or just think about this this, this event, right? <clears throat> uh, when Abraham, Abraham, Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam was raising the foundations of the house, excellent translation, and with him Ismail saying our lord accept this from us indeed you are the hearing the knowing right and so oh beautiful ayah so he says so it's the ayah says when so this word yarfa'u al-qawaida qawaid plural of al-qaida which which means the foundation right so obviously when you're building a, a building you don't just build it on the ground right because it can it's not firm it's not stable and uh, you know it can get damaged quickly so you build deep you dig deeper into the ground and there are a number of positions who build the Kaaba first and many you know uh, you know so they're, they're based on some slightly weak generations some said that the angels built it first then said Adam and others have, have opined that um you will say that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam I think this seems like a good solid position it's the strongest position, and obviously, when we know through the text of the Quran, that Sidna Ibrahim built it first, and then uh, 40 years later, he built um, Al Masjid Al Aqsa, right? Little Makris. And so, so this is, so he says, uh, if, you, if, you, if you take it literally, <clears throat> he says, when uh, Ibrahim was, re was raising the foundations, what does it mean, raising the foundations? What it actually means is when Sidna Ibrahim was building the Kaaba, right? When he was but he says when he was raising the foundations of the house. Um uh, we could say actually a better transition would be uh, 
when you was building upon the foundations so you have the foundations which are below ground then you build upon them as you go higher and the whole thing becomes one structure right so it's as though the foundations have been raised so the foundation is set, was a set of bricks in the ground you build on top of them so it's like one whole unit and now that unit wherever its top part is that's the foundation it's just come higher right that's that's the kind of uh, uh, understanding so uh, he says that when ibrahim or ibirfa or ibrahim al qawaid when ibrahim was building upon the foundations min al bayt and he mentions of the house which house the kaaba right and this has this effect in arabic of you know tafkhim it shows that this is something this is a tremendous act and the thing which is being built is tremendous itself right you know allah could have you know um, just inspired people to build it um, but rather no he, what he did he commanded you know the greatest two of the greatest messengers here build this building for me right and uh, so it's it's the locus you know we don't worship the kaaba the worship is for allah with something to give us a general unity in you know, the tawaf or praying towards it um, and then he says and as was ismail so ibrahim was building as was ismail so it shows that who was doing you know who was this command primarily given to and who was primarily carrying it out sayyiduna ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and sayyiduna ismail was helping right and in a narration Sahih of Bukhari, the Prophet uh, told us Allah, um, that Ibrahim went to Mecca a few times, uh, even after Sidna uh, Ismail had, you know, become an adult. Uh, so we know that on one of these occasions, he, he saw Ismail and said, you know, I've been commanded to do something, will you help me? And he said, yes. So, so some of the other say that um, Ismail was bringing the, the rocks, carving them out um, and, and bringing them and Sidna uh, Ibrahim was lifting them and, uh, and building the actual building of the, of the Kaaba uh, and then he said and then what do we do right um, they, now they realize that this is an act of worship they realize this is an act of devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they know what's going to happen with regards to the Hajj and all of these things so you know they've been told uh, purify my house for those who perform tawaf and those who, who remain within there in devotion and those in prayer, right, in ruku and such that. So they say, Rabbana taqabbal minna, our dear loving Lord. So they've said, uh, Rabbana, so to show that, you know, you're our master, we're your slaves, we obey your command, right? And we're doing this for you. Now, this is the important thing about deeds and sincerity. Um, you know, um, if if it's not done for Allah, then it's it's like it's not done at all, right? And if you in terms of reward and acceptance and stuff, and if it's done for other than Allah, if there, if, if it's something that should be done for Allah and act of worship, then there's no problem, right? And you know, far far be it for any of the prophets to be insincere, right? No, they have absolute complete sincerity. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam as one of the mukhlasin with Allah with the fatwa and Allah mukhla. Mukhlasin, as opposed to like the word you'd normally use for a normal believer, Mukhlisin, right? Um, people who are sincere, who make their worship purely for Allah. But with Sayyidina Musa, it's passive, meaning that Allah gave them such a level of Iman and, you know, closeness that they're unable to direct their worship to anyone else. It's like they've auto automatically been turned on and kept fixed on sincerity it's like the, you know who else are we supposed to you know impress that kind that, that kind of thing so then they say in the uh, minna. so what is kabul for allah to be pleased with an action and to reward a person for it basically right and allah's acceptance of this action is you know, important because if there's no acceptance then um, it's not you know it, it's 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 not of value right so, and you know, subhanAllah. So, so, so they say, Rabbana taqabbal me, our dear Lord, accept this from us. Innaka anta sami'ul alim. Indeed, you, uh, without a doubt, and only you, uh, are the all uh, see, all hearing and the all seeing. So, what does it mean, all hearing? Is that you're hearing our prayers, right? And, you know, and there was a saying, Rabbana, our Lord. So, it's as though, like, 
if you don't answer us who will so these are all lessons that we should you know use in our own du'as right now our dear loving lord if you don't answer us who will you know accept this from us right it, you know, it's, it's done for you it, indeed you alone uh, are the one who hears everything right and you're hearing our prayers and you're hearing our you know our you know pleas you know to 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 draw closer to you and for you to accept this from us so and you know what's in our hearts and you know that you know um subhanallah that you know what we want is to please you what we want is to be devoted uh, slaves to you for as long as we exist right that's the kind of thing that's being said it's implied that you know in the kind of you know it so that we, you know we're not faking it you know it so please accept it from us right and then and then oops, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, mentions more of the du'as right رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ and our dear Lord make us Muslims in submission to you uh, and from our descendants a Muslim nation in submission to you وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ تَتَوَابَ الرَّحِيمِ and show us our rights, R-I-T-E-S, and accept our repentance. Indeed, you are the accepting of repentance, the merciful, right? So, what's being said here? رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ So they say, our dear loving Lord, make us people, make us Muslim, make us too, people who are Muslims, for you know, what does Muslim mean? Not just this identity that we have, have now. The meaning of the word people that are in complete surrender to you, right? That complete, you know, devotion and surrender outwardly, inwardly, make us Muslims. Make us people that are, you know, who recognize your authority and your divinity and, you know, they, you know, they, they submit to you with their belief, with their actions. Everything right? make us, you know. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for this as well, because this is this is a high rank, you know, uh, on on this complete devotion and, and submission and surrender to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And you know, this is why many people uh, can't accept Islam because they can't surrender, right? You know, that's the thing. <clears throat> they feel that you know, I can't uh, surrender. I can't submit myself to someone else. For, for whatever reasons, right? But, but, but that's the issue. So, the, you know, what we do is we ask for this, right? This 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 khudur, uh, this devoted submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ Right? And they ask for, um, for there to be a nation, a group of people who are also fully surrendered, مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ so it's interesting that they say Rabbana well Rabbana was Allah Muslimaini Laka Omin Ummati Omin Duriatina Ummata Muslimatan Laka. So this it means to you devotion and submission to you on every level. Um but it's 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 clear who who that they wanna you know submit and surrender to. But the laka in both situations really drives it home and just you're the focus of this, right? Uh, Muslim and Ilaka. and from our descendants, they said. So who are their descendants, right? The Arabs, right? And you know, it's not like Sidna Ibrahim doesn't care about the descendants of his half. No, but right now this is a special moment. You know, Allah has commanded him to build the Kaaba. They build him the Kaaba, an amazing act of worship, amazing place, and it's a special moment. You know, so there's times there are moments like the last third of the night where you know. Du'as are answered, so they made this du'a, right? And so what they want is from their descendants, from the Arabs, an ummah Muslim that is complete in complete submission and surrender to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, who you know embody the um, the qualities of slavehood, right? And then they say, "Wa arina manasikana," right? And shows our rights, uh, our, uh, you know, the word the word nusuk. The root of the word means the very limit of uh, worship, you know, uh, worshiping to the, the, the most, ex, ex, not extreme, but the most intense degree, right? 
and, and obedience is the most intense way. That's where the root word comes. And then the mansak is, you know, it can mean the, the time or the place or an act of that, right? So an act of intense worship. And uh, it's it's come to mean in the Arabic language and in Islam, it's come to mean the acts of worship that are specific to the Hajj right, and the Umrah. So, you know, um, the Tawaf, the Sa'i, uh, you know, uh, standing at Arafat, these things, these are called the rites, the Mansak Manasik of Hajj. And they become specific to that. So he says, so this shows these, right? Because, you know, it's a new act of worship. You know, the Kaaba didn't exist before, so there was no Tawaf. So shows, teaches that. And this is a blessing, right? So we know how to do things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know how to do things that, you know, draws closer to Allah. Because at the end of the day, whatever you do, you'll see in the akhirah, right? And, and you benefit from it, right? So the asking to, to be shown this in order for them to do it, right? So, so they can manifest their submission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then they say, um, وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ تَوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ And relent to us. Right. So Tawba has this indication of, of you know, returning and stopping something and coming back. So Tawba from the human being is when you decide, I'm not going to do this thing anymore. And you make a firm intention to stop it. And, you know, uh, you know, if it involves returning someone's rights, you return those rights. And, you know, you... You make you have this resolve. I won't do this anymore, right? And so, this is from you know from sins. And the motive behind tawbah is uh, like remorse. Like I did this. I wish I hadn't done this. Oh Allah, forgive me. Then there are higher levels. For example, a higher level is inaba, where the motive is love. Uh, you go back to Allah out of love, right? And so this thing with tawbah alayna. And so tawbah that's tawbah from the slave, but from Allah. It's Allah inspiring a person to repent and turn back to Him, or Allah's accepting that person. So once you make tawbah, if you're sincere, Allah accepts it. All right? Yeah, he's just so kind. He's always accepting, right? And so then they say, Inna ka anta tawabu rahim. Indeed, you alone are the tawab, someone who who accepts someone's tawbah time after time after time after time after time. The the patent tawab is. The, the the pattern you'd use to describe a profession, right? So he's a professional acceptor of Dover, you could say, right? You know, he's just all the time. You turn back to him, he'll accept it. You turn back to him, he'll accept it, right? And that's the beautiful thing about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala here, that you know, despite our faults and flaws, we go back and we say, Oh Allah, I, I messed up, and <laughs> he accepts it. Not only does he accept it, uh, wipes away the sin. You know, he's uh, in the kind of tawab rahim the ever merciful, the ever kind. So all the time, so, you know, this is his permanent quality. So you go, which means that, you know, if he's kind, uh, it has this indication of giving gifts and favors. So you go back to him, you say, oh Allah, I'm sorry, I messed up. You make this tawbah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, rewards you. <laughs> you know, he, he wipes out your sin, wipes it away, and then he gives you gifts on top of that, you know. Yeah, so, so now the question is, why are they making tawbah? Why, why are they saying, you know, have, have they have they done something wrong? You know, it's it's deep. This is it's very deep because on a human level, Allah is absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. We can't praise Allah, you know, as He deserves because He's just, you know, only He can do that, right? Because He's absolutely perfect. Because we don't know. You know what he what he is, what he's like, all of his qualities. We don't know that, but he knows, right? That's why you know, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen in his words. That's the best way to do it, right? But you know, if someone was to describe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but even let's say even even through our worship, right? Trying to worship him as he deserves, it's not possible, right? Because we do what we're commanded to do, right? And we hope to you know do it to the best of our ability all the time. But, you know, human, you can do what we're commanded to do. But, you know, it's it's like in the hadith of the man who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 500 years and then Allah allows him to enter paradise through Allah's mercy. And he's like, what, what about my deeds? 
So his eyesight is weighed against 500 years of worship and his eyesight is still uh, a greater blessing than all of his worship. So what about everything else, the iman and the food and the drink and the company and everything that you had in your life, right? So it's as though there's a recognition that you're perfect, right? And you're, you know, you're so far vast and beyond, uh, you know, our abilities to thank and praise that, you know, it's like we're falling short, we're deficient. So therefore, you know, even the prophets, you know, the saying of Tuba Alayna, it's like there's been some sort of deficiency from us, even though there hasn't, right? You know, it, whatever the prophets do, they do it, uh, you know, at an incredibly high level. So uh, it's it's like this, you know, this humility, and it's true, true, true humility, which is in the heart, right? Humility, you, you know, you can, you know, you can be like, oh no, you know, uh, don't make me sit in the front of the car, I'm not good enough. <laughs> if someone's giving a lift, that's, you know, that's on the limbs, right? And it could be true, it could be fake, but true humility is in the heart. They have humility and they're expressing it, right? And accept, you know, relent towards us, right? To Ba'alina, right? There's no big, you know, feeling of greatness or oh, look what we've done you know you should reward us you should give us double the reward it's not like that it's like oh Allah this is the best we've done right really beautiful right <clears throat> a very different attitude to we won't believe in you until you show us Allah right uh, only when we've seen him we really believe really, really, you know very different attitude right that's the guidance right so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that they asked as well ربنا وبعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم أدي لاد and send amongst them uh, a messenger from themselves who will recite to them your verses and teach them the book and wisdom and purify them indeed you are the exalted in might the all wise so ربنا وبعث فيهم أدي لاد and you know, send to them, right, from amongst them, Rasulan, uh, <clears throat> an indefinite word, you show a tremendous, huge, right, a messenger. What's his focus? What's his role? He comes and he conveys to us the commands and the prohibitions and the injunctions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, you know, Allah so they're asking for a prophet to a messenger. Uh, to come from amongst them. That's why, and you know, that's what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. He said, "Ana da'wa tu abi Ibrahim. I am the du'a of my father Ibrahim. This du'a, right, manifest, you know, answered. Rabbana, our dear loving Lord, wa ba'ath fihim. So, they, they, you know, they're making a du'a for their own descendants, right? Because if their own descendants, you know, have got it straight, then it, it's it's easy for others to follow as well, right? And so, you know, send amongst them this tremendous, huge messenger, right? Rasul, I mean, and foresee him from amongst them. So, you know, he knows them, they know him. It's easy for them to accept him. It's easy for him to convey God's rulings to them, same language, uh, same, you know, culture. So he can show them how to apply all of these things. There's so many benefits, benefits and blessings that Rasul, I mean, and foresee him. Uh, what does he do? Yetlu alayhim ayatika. Right, he recites to them your signs, the signs that will tell them that there's one God, the signs that will tell him that only Allah deserves worship, the signs that will tell them about the truth of the revelation he's brought, the signs that will tell them about how to follow him, the signs that will tell them about you know how to attain eternal success, right? In you know in you know in the akhirah, right? The signs that will tell 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 them you know. What what is wrong and how to shun it, right? And what's right and how to follow it. Yetlu alayhim ayatika, your tremendous signs, he'll recite them to them, right? The ayat of the Quran, the signs. So, really, so, so, the, so the verse of the Quran, the core of the Quran, are called ayah. Each one is called an ayah and then ayat or another plural, ayi. And you know, it's each one of them individually is a miracle, right? A sign. That points to the oneness and perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's where success is. Right? And for him to teach them the book, once again, the revelation, its commands, its prohibitions, injunctions, wisdom, right? And and then, and wisdom, the wisdom, which 
the ulama have said because it's juxtaposed with the with the kitab with the book it refers to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you know and it is wisdom right because you know <clears throat> it's the means to arriving at absolute success you know someone could you just follow you know the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you know the, the hadiths that we have of guidance and you know and you can reach a huge rank right just learning about the akhlaq of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so on that's you know fasting every day and praying you know all night every night and so on that's got excellent character they have the equal reward right because you know, there are many ways to goodness right so this is wisdom and some people can do more of one and some people can do more of the other and some people can combine the both combine the two so you know it's wisdom of how to be a perfect human being how to reach your human potential right so for example you know um you know we all have the potential of you know being people with the best character and you know we have got some flaws which can pull us down so you know just learning from the prophet how to get beyond them and aspire to the heights if you don't see someone that is at the top and then you don't know you don't have a goal to aspire to that's where the messenger comes in right and he teaches them the wisdom or you zakki him and he does tazkiyah tazkiyah is basically purification which allows for growth so it's like in a garden if you remove the weeds you can get flowers without any flowers sorry without without the, without the weeds gone the flowers can't grow right so it's purification for, for which allows for growth so it's refining the soul refining the self that's what the, the, that's what it is right in the country aziz al hakim indeed you alone are al aziz the mighty right the invincible right and the all wise you know you know how to do this you know how to when to make it happen how to make it happen in the best way <clears throat> and you have the power to do so right so uh, another beautiful dua right, from sayyidina ibrahim and sayyidina ismail and then what they do is uh, so, so so this is like the end of their dua and what comes next is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ صَفِحَ نَفْسَهِ And who would be averse to the religion of Ibrahim except one who makes a fool of himself? وَلَقَدْ اسْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And after that beautiful, powerful dua, Allah praises them, right? Saying, praises Ibrahim, right? Especially, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ who would detest and dislike you know the way of Sayyidina Ibrahim who would do that who would dislike it because what you know Bani Israel is saying oh, we don't want this revelation we don't want to follow you you know you're Arab all of these things and what are they turning away from the way of Sayyidina Ibrahim their greatest ancestor he says who would turn away from the way of Sayyidina Ibrahim Illa man safiha nafsa, except for someone who makes a fool out of himself right it's like here you know you you know someone comes to you with with a tray full of diamonds and a tray full of you know feces right you know <laughs> who would leave the diamonds and go for the other tray is only a fool right so who would take leave the opportunity to have ultimate everlasting success paradise have all you want everything that you want happiness pleasure no sadness, no pain, no death, no fatigue, nothing, right? When instead you choose your reputation in society or your, your, your social standing, right? Not even reputation, your social standing. I won't be important anymore. I'll be a normal Muslim, right? Come on, right? You know, that's the illa man safihan, except for someone that makes himself a fool. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I swear by God, I swear by Allah, laqad istafaynahu fi dunya. We certainly chose him and istifa comes from the safu, you know, to be the cream of something, the very best that we selected him to be, you know, out of, out of everyone in the dunya in his time. He was the best and, you know, out of all of humanity, after Sayyidina Muhammad, it's Sayyidina Ibrahim. That we, we selected him and we chose him, you know, and it's not like this thing of meaning we, we, we gave him this, a special distinction in the dunya. 
Maka and Allah swearing a qasim. It's an oath. So why aren't you following his way? Look at how great Sayyidina Ibrahim is and Allah swore an oath on top of that. We did this. We selected him and, you know, gave him the special rank in the dunya. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And he, indeed he, without a doubt, knowing the sentence with inner power there, in the akhirah, in the afterlife, the eternal life, لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Without a doubt, is truly of the righteous. And what do the righteous get? The best of rewards. Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah saying this, everything you do for, in the dunya is for that time, and in that time, He's of the, you know, he's one of the, the, the most righteous of people. And the word salih can be used for a normal righteous person or the elite. You know, that there's, there's degrees, isn't there, right? وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ He's one of the greatest of people, right? Why aren't you following him? Right? Don't make a fool out of yourself. Don't humiliate yourself by, by you know, such a foolish action. That's the thing, right? And uh, so we we'll continue from here, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbi. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.